I've never seen that. That's cool. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV down here with the 373, yeah you know me, Rockwood fifth wheel or Flagstaff, they're the same thing. Um, this is a family model, but they went about it a little bit differently. Like a lot of times I see versions of this um, with like an extra kitchen slide and sometimes it sounds crazy, but sometimes putting a slide in the kitchen actually limits kitchen storage and prep space. And by not doing that, they were able to fully utilize the whole wall from floor to ceiling, side to side, and really give this uh, thing a pretty respectable kitchen. But the thing is, like if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, you still have that living room super slide with all the windows facing the campsite of the RV, which is awesome. And you still have a really good like direct facing entertainment. And that's what's great. If you're stuck inside on a rainy day, you can be like, kids, go to your room because they have an awesome room with a half bath back there that uh, they can hang out in all day and have a good time with their own entertainment center. But like on a rainy day, mom and dad, grandpa and grandpa, whoever, don't tend to just sit up in their bedroom. They own the RV. They want to sit in the living room, so they actually have a really good entertainment setup. That's where I think this one's really smart. Everybody gets their little W that makes sense. Now, um, they're not using Asdell anymore, but they are still using composites. So the general construction hasn't changed, just the name brand of the material kind of changed. I'm just going to call it composite for simplicity. So they're using composite in the sidewalls, plywood, tongue and groove floor, but all six-sided welded aluminum cage structure in this, which is cool. But the, again, the half bathroom, that's one of the things that I think really kind of separates this one. There's a lot of RVs like, oh, we can sleep 12 people. Yeah, but you only got uh, one hole for 12 butts. And that just doesn't always work for everybody. It's those extra things that kind of make the difference here. Now they did go with a little bit of a truncated condensed upper deck to keep the overall length weight cost uh, a, a little more um, manageable, basically. So this is probably something a good three quarter ton heavy duty could go to, but you would not regret having one ton on one of these. So whenever you're looking at a model like this, where, you know, more than one builder makes it, it gives you a really good kind of opportunity, even if this isn't exactly the floor plan you're looking at. Like if you're comparing um, like Rockwood and Reflection and whoever else makes this, you get the idea you can kind of get to see how they stack up against one another and, and not just compare floor plans, which maybe this is the right floor plan for you to compare, but you actually just get to see like, what does the brand as a whole bring to the table? So um, Rockwood and Flagstaff's fifth wheels, um, they they basically, it, it's only their, their upper end trim package. So Rockwood calls it signature, Flagstaff calls it classic, but they they only offer their, their, their highest features. You know, like you might notice the, uh, the dual roller shades, the blackout day and night shades. And this floor plan does bring us some really nice campsite window coverage. It doesn't really have overhead storage in the, the slide like classic RVs would, but the visual symmetry of seeing those nice big windows is kind of cool. Now they got a little bit of a little, uh, I call it Franken table with the Judy Dench benchy bench going on the left side here. A lot of brands have really started adopting that. I kind of like it. It sort of grew on me. Um, your slide floor. This is a marine kind of woven slide floor. And basically, they've done everything they could to get heat vents out of the floor. I, I don't consciously remember seeing any in this RV, but I do sometimes miss things and overlook, so I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. Technically, up in the bedroom, we will see a couple little bits of carpet, but essentially, this floor plan has um, carpetless walkable space. Now, right now, we are in population control, as uh, Prince would call it. <laughs> right now, if you know that reference, you know that reference and you are laughing. And if you don't, you probably don't want to look it up. Um, or you can be cuddle compliant with a little love seat right there. So a little bit of whatever action, you know, you kind of prefer. Now, this TV is on a pivoting swing arm, although I don't know that it necessarily needs to be. But essentially, you know, if you want to, you know, sit over here and we're, we're eating stuff and you want to tilt the TV this way, you can. Or... Uh, you know, just leave it pointed toward the sofa. Got our electric space heat and bunion burner, to Tootsie Toaster down there. And this is a, I don't normally say this about Rockwoods, especially up in the Signature series. Like, these walls feel weirdly blank to me. They are normally so good about doing something everywhere. But I think it actually creates a unique opportunity where, you know, you could do a little bit of decorating. Like maybe you got one of those live, laugh, love stickers you want to put on the wall or something like that, you know, or like family. I don't know. But 
I could see somebody doing a little decorating there. Now this outlet has a little sticker on it. It says inverter circuit. Um, this RV has a, a minimum 1800 watt inverter. And if you get their big advanced super solar package, I think that jumps up to like a 3000. But um, by default, there's like six, seven or eight uh, outlets in the RV that are all wired into that inverter circuit. And, uh, you know, if you're just on battery power, those things can take over. Now, it's a smart inverter system. Basically, what that means is if you, um, you know, if you're hooked up to shore power, park power, it, it, it doesn't do anything. It just goes dormant. But if you unhook from that, then the inverter will kick in and start powering outlets. However, understand that will deplete batteries more quickly. And if you are boondock dry camping, one of the best things I can tell you is use that feature as little as possible. Now in our floor plan flyby in a flash, whatever you want to call it, you saw these big three uh, pillow cushions over here over on that lower sofa um, in, the, uh, in the slide box. I just kind of wanted to showcase for you the fact that they are perfectly floatable. You can move them portable. That's where it's floatable. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> floatable. Anyway, and that's what I'm going to call a big kid bunk because that goes over the camp kitchen and this big, deep entertainment center. Now, all the TVs that you're going to see in this are all smart TVs. Um, this back here, 12 volt smart TV, uh, kind of with its own little integrated sound bar. That's something that a lot of brands are getting away from is all these like separate speakers and whatnot. Um, Rockwood's not totally, totally there, but they are. They do seem to be kind of moving that direction. What I was getting at with the floatable uh, pillows is if you just want to day bed this sucker and lay down on it, you can. Um, you can use those pillows. You can turn it into a sofa. Obviously, we got the move bunk. Get out the way here with the double gas struts. But flipping that sucker down, you see, obviously, that's a sleeper. And this lower sofa is very interesting. The bottom slides open almost like a trundle, but uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not. It's not a trundle. It actually has a little mechanism, spring-loaded mechanism, so that the the expanded sleep space pops up and locks. It pops and locks like a hip hop dancer. Is basically what I'm getting at here. Um, also, the storage here in the in the bunk room is not like gigantic, but it's not terrible either. I like that they do give you stuff, and they do include a ladder to get uh, the kids into the upper bed uh, on their own. I will tell you, if you're my weight though, and you're barefoot, it does it is not. It hurts. It can hurt basically. Uh, again, no heat vent in the floor back here fantastic in a kid's bunk room uh for i think some obvious reasons and you might notice also heat vent in the half bath over here and this is one of the other really great qualities of this floor plan when you get these models that can sleep so many people and you've got a a, a, a private bedroom all the way in the front and then you've got private sleeping all the way in the back it's nice that everybody has a bathroom right next to them basically um i really like the extra counter space, like there's room for the kids, toothbrushes and stuff in here. This is well thought out, well executed. Um, the space around the, the toilet and half bath actually was not terrible either. And something else I noticed as we start looking up here a little bit, um, there's extra little, um, like I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know if you call it linen space, towel space, but they, they had room. So they did an extra cabinet. And then you might have noticed even in the half bath, all the way up at the ceiling, they still have the big XL vent fan, which I think is awesome sauce right there. Um, that is definitely better than not awesome sauce. The uh, little pontoon removable armrest right there, by the way, really a uh, handy thing. If you need to uh, boomerang action one of those at a gas station murder hobo, will come and get you. It's a nice little distraction methodology right there. Um, these are 50 amp and... I, I can't remember at this stage if second air is standard on these or not. I'd almost be surprised if they're not. But look at the oven. Look at the big oven action that they're putting in this thing, brother. That is that is severe. That is no joke. Um, the pop-up power tower also right next to that, you see those kitchen breeze windows. That is very handy because you don't see power outlets under the overhead cabinets here. They kind of make those come to you. And if you want that out of the way, you just flick the little button and it, you know, essentially goes away. Up top here, you got a rain sensing uh, Max Air like XL vent fan. And that automatically includes uh, a, uh, a rain like uh, vent cover. So this floor plan by default has three of those because you're going to get one in each bathroom and you're going to get uh, one here in the kitchen. So just want to show you that is a big residential size microwave. It is not uh, convection though. So kind of uh, keep that in mind. And 
This floor plan is one of those tricky ones. It's right on the, kind of the borderline cusp. Like I, it's a, uh, that's one of the 10.7 cubic foot uh, 12 volt refrigerators. It almost feels a little bit small, but it, I don't know. It also kind of still feels appropriate. So looking at all the kitchen storage here, this is what I was talking about. If this kitchen had a slide, you could not have that gigantic pantry. You, you, you just, you couldn't do all the storage that this kitchen has. And that also means that like, it doesn't have an island. And I kind of like no island floor plans. I think that they're easier to traverse. And I think that people get hung up less. I think that it provides fewer hiccups and hangups in road mode. Although I don't know that this floor plan specifically is really going to be an excellent road mode opportunity kind of camper. But my point is, I when manufacturers can get away with it, I personally really like RVs with no islands, but that's just my two cents. And in case you were curious, uh, right next to that flip up countertop extension leaf over there uh, between the, the leaf and the farm sink, that is your tire pressure monitor system. Uh, Rockwood's been doing this for a long time. And uh, a lot of brands have since jumped onto that bandwagon and I'm here for I like towing safety features. You do have the privacy shade built right into uh, the entry door, by the way. And when you get to the signature series and the fifth wheels, you start getting these things like Montana does this a lot. They have these little magnet hold backs. Those things actually work, they, they work exceptionally well. I see people leave their doors open to their bedrooms um, in transit with those things and not have issues, which I think is very cool. Now, we're going to get a better look at it in a few minutes here. Um, uh, actually, you know what? As, as long as I'm pointing at it, here's what the, uh, <laughs> the TV looks like if you are actually laying in bed, you know, just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, but since there is a sliding privacy door on the opposite side uh, of the uh, um, RV, there's no like wall straight across from the, uh, the true queen bed here where you could mount something uh, like a television. So it has to kind of be on that crazy swing arm there. Um, when you see the air conditioners, they're 15,000 BTU, and they are both centralized. And what's cool is they actually do a double ducted run at, uh, where there's, you know, ducting on both sides of the RV, and every single vent can um, open and close and, and do all kinds of things however you want it to, basically. This might be one of those things where somebody goes, ugh. And you might go, it's fine. I don't care. Like, I can live with it myself, but I'm, I'm like one of those people I can really... I can just deal with stuff, you know. As long as an RV checks 9 out of 10 boxes, I'm okay with it. Like the elbow room around that porcelain foot flush toilet, assuming I remember to close the privacy door, pretty darn good. Um, I love the clear shower doors, and I'll tell you a little trick on those. Get like a, a squeegee and squeegee those suckers down to really help keep the spots under control. The headroom in these, because the upper deck's nice and tall as it is, plus they still have that vaulted, barreled ceiling. Barreled is the technical word, not vaulted. It's a different thing. I, I use those words interchangeably, even though they're technically not. You get the idea. There's, there's plenty of headroom here. And um, that is height-adjustable shower hardware, so me and my wife don't have to argue about stuff. At my house, we finally just, like, installed, like, a rain shower, so the water just comes down from the ceiling. Now, now nobody can argue. Now the water just happens where the water happens. And the shower miser system. Now you might notice it's a little discolored. It's not because it's damaged or stressed. It's because it's kind of warm today. Uh, and that's that's the whole point. That's like one of those 1990s hyper color, uh, color changing shirt jobs right there. Um, if you are boondocking and you don't want to waste any of your fresh water, what you do is you flick that little uh, shower miser button. And what that will do for you is it will recycle the water, you know, from your fresh tank through your hot water system back into your fresh tank until the water is like proper shower temperature. And then that blue thing, temperature sensitive, turns from blue to white, uh, which is the opposite of what the Coors Light cans used to do. Although I don't think the Coors Light cans actually, uh, I don't think the mountains turned blue when the cans called anymore. Didn't they quit doing that? I, I don't, I don't know. I never let them, I never let them sit around long enough to get warm. So. <laughs> But hey, that's that's just me. Now, you, you might have noticed you didn't have hanging uh, wardrobe towers on either side of the bed. So that is a big closet over there with some dresser space down below. And I would really love it if I could flip all this overhead cabinetry open and leave it that way so you could see in there. But weirdly, sometime last year, they quit including their um, like strut hardware. 
And given that, I would almost prefer the doors swing open sideways so that I don't have to like head juggle the thing. But I am, to be fair, being fairly nitpicky. By the way, all the drawers that you're seeing in the RV, they are all a um, uh, residential soft clothes kind of thing. So giving you a peek at the dresser storage that we have here, again, dresser space going on under the uh, the closet. And you also have this easy lift storage pocket going on under the bed there. And again, that is a true queen. Um, true queen beds like this that are in a north-south arrangement, not in a bed slide. One of the cool things is there are exactly zero questions about those as to whether they can or cannot be laid upon in transit because they're just on, you know, a fixed structure in the body of the camper. Even when that wardrobe slide is closed, everything is still open and unimpeded. Um, and being a Rockwood, anything that is going to be structural like that or load-bearing uh, that they build in-house is going to have a welded aluminum cage. So it's actually a welded aluminum cage bed. You might have noticed that when I lifted up the bed storage. Now, this RV, I'm going to say, has better road mode access than I expected. But it's still not going to be overnight sleepover friendly unless you can open all of the slides. What I mean by what I just said is, I didn't think we are going to be able to get to the kitchen with the slide closed. And it's sort of tight, but not terrible. You can do a one sideways travel trailer two-step, and that means you can get over here, you can get to the kitchen, you can get to the refrigerator, the sink, and all that stuff. So bedroom, bathroom, refrigerator, travel accessible. However, the bunk room, uh, you have to have that uh, door closed to, to close the living room super slide. And frankly, with the bunk room slide closed, you ain't getting in there and doing anything with it anyway unless it's fully open, so plan accordingly. And there's things about, you know, every RV that I like and dislike. One of the, the catch-22s of this model right here is the way that it's laid out by not going with an extended upper deck, it shortened the potential for that awning arm, and you might notice how that awning goes right over that big super slide. So as a result, this RV is not going to have amazing patio awning space. You're, you might want to bring like a little, you know, uh, easy up screen room kind of thing with you, depending on, you know, what you're looking for and what you're looking to accomplish. This is a neat little like, hey, they get it kind of thing. They include a little diagram uh, over here. You see that white sticker? It just visibly shows you with red and black lines, um, how to hook up one battery to 12 volts or to six volts, because that's uh, a very different way of wiring an RV. Now, um, they are also coming out with their fifth wheel version of their power package, which is like, you know, big lithium, big converter, uh, you know, solar package kind of thing. And uh, you will see that rolling out um, over pretty much, uh, I think eventually their entire fifth wheel lineup. It is something they do need to individually engineer on a per floor plan basis. Cause one, they have to find room to shove all the stuff. Although on a fifth wheel, that front compartment does make a pretty good huckleberry. Um, secondly though, uh, it changes the wiring of the RV on a fundamental level. Now I didn't think about it. I, I just realized as I got over here, you got a half bath. Yeah, I was afraid of this. Uh, this is what I was getting at. This is a two headed sewer monster. Because you have a kitchen and full bath in the front and then a half bath in the back, you do have uh, a black and gray outlet behind the tires as well as a black and gray outlet up front. Now, when you read the holding tank capacities on my spec chart, like the black and the gray capacities on this are gonna look bonkers. Well, remember, that's because this has like multiple gray tanks, multiple black tanks, because you have multiple rooms all with various, you know, water fixtures in them. And this, this is awesome. So when I, I saw this big door sitting wide open and I'm like, I don't see a magnet hold back for it. This thing's gonna just fly around in the breeze. No, they put it on its own friction hinge. Look at the hardware over here. <laughs> and you'll see some more of that unconventional borderline custom hardware back in the camp kitchen uh, as well. Now, as I mentioned previously, they're not using um, Asdell specifically in the walls anymore there, but it's still uh, a composite material. So we're a welded aluminum cage structure all the way around the RV, the roof, the walls, uh, all laminated, even the slide walls. Like um, Grand Design likes to put a sticker on the side of their walls that says, punch it, brother, you know, basically. No, I mean, not exactly in those words, but you get the idea. Um, 
<laughs> Speaking of, you know, borderline Hulk Hogan brother kind of talk, let me tell you something, brother. Oh, yeah. This camp kitchen, ah, uh, <laughs> this is awesome what they did here. And it's, it's the littlest things that get me jazzed, obviously. But, uh, I mean, to the extreme, they are rocking the mic like a vandal. They, they are lighting up the stage and waxing chumps like candles is what they're doing here. So, again, um, doing stuff differently. Some brands have drawers. Some have a slide-open little extension countertop. Rockwood has three of and instead of or, where all three are a like uh, a, a, a powder coated steel like a galvanized steel not powder coated but you uh, a protected steel that slides open and closed when you need them and then they have this uh, gas strutted custom vertical uh, chop kind of swing arm system that acts as their uh, their their burner mount and I noticed this thing has uh, hooks, it has cleats on both sides. So if you want it out of the way of that drawer, you can mount it like I've done so uh, done here. But if it's like a rainy day and you wanna walk out of the entry door and then walk over to the camp kitchen and you wanna cook under the big camp kitchen door without really getting rained on, you can mount it on the other side. And it's just little details like that that separate the brand here. And, and that's the thing, you know, uh, Rockwood Flagstaff, never the, the least expensive, never, you know, they used to be super, super lightweight and they've really bulked up on a lot of structural things and they're not typically the lightest weight anymore, but they're always one of the most thoughtful brands. The, like, if you've never owned an RV, you may not appreciate a lot of what is being shown here. And I'm not trying to talk down to you, I'm just, I'm trying to be real about this. Like, you don't know what you don't know. If you've been camping, it's those little details that will determine how much you do or don't enjoy an RV for a, a lot of years, you know? And if you're gonna spend this kind of money, it's nice to know that you're getting something you like. Now you may have noticed that was not just a cold water sprayer port, that was a full hot cold sprayer, which is kind of cool. And you have the receiver hitch and a full bumper on the back, which is kind of nice. Um, and uh, now that these are all kind of all signature series fifth wheels you might notice you know things like auto leveling you're not going to have to wonder if it has that or not anymore but this is uh, interesting i'd love some feedback on this they are not using a tankless on-demand water heater but they are using an extra large gas electric fast recharge water heater what that means is it is dsi auto ignition that means direct spark ignition dsi by the way um, so when someone says DSI auto ignition, it's kind of like ATM machine. It means direct spark ignition, auto ignition, <laughs> which maybe technically is correct. I don't know. It sure sounds funny. But um, what I'm getting at is it could run electric and propane sides simultaneously to give you, um, you know, more recharge per hour. That's what that one can do right there. Now, there's a couple different brands that have versions of floor plans like this, like uh, Grand Designs, what's theirs called, like a 311 BHS, something like that. But they're not ex the only exclusive builder or something like this. I'd love it if you, um, I'll leave you some links in the description, obviously to check for pricing and availability, but also to check out those other models that I can remember to link for you. Um, let me know which one you'd go with and why. Like, what do you like about them? And what is the one thing they should change here on this RV to make it better? Let me know. I'll get the fee uh, feedback relayed back to them. Till next time. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Gonna sneeze. Maybe. Banana, 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 banana. Okay. Okay, so this should probably be some bonus footage at the end of the video. You might be wondering why I was chanting banana just now. I swear, it sounds nuts. If you do that, if you hold your finger under your nose and say banana as fast as you can, you won't sneeze. It's only failed me one time ever in my life in 40 years. It's stupid, but it works. Anyway. Obviously chop that off. <laughs>